Hey, hey, today we're going to talk about a stone known as aquamarine. Often comes in a blue to blue green color. And you can find it in most lands across the earth in various locations. And as I've talked about before, if you uh, feel like it's unethical to be obtaining physical form of stones, you can work with them through the use of just meditation, uh, you know, visualizing that. You can also engage in art with that, so painting, drawing, photography, watching videos about stone, etc. Now, the vibration in regards to how fast we would measure that aquamarine moves in even though everything looks really still everything in our environment does vibrate has a vibration so aquamarine is considered to have quite a high vibration in um, regards to a lot of other stones and some other matter in our world now the physiology that this stone often works with is like the throat glands, organs, the teeth, the jaw, uh, thyroid, hormonal systems, types of organs, the stomach as well, and the immune system. Now in regards to energy points on the body that this is often associated with, one being the throat and the other being the heart. So in that area, really. Now, from what I can gather, it looks like aquamarine is pretty resilient in almost any type of cleansing form, whether it be in rice, in the sun, in the moon, with water. Also welcome you to do your research on that just to make sure that your ritual cleansing of the stone is safe for the stone and for you and everything else in the environment. Now when we talk about planets and elements, Aquamarine is often associated with Neptune and then of course the um, archetype of Pisces and also the air element which I thought is quite interesting because when I think of Neptune and Pisces I think of water which is what some may consider a different element than air uh, but yeah <laughs> so another thing that you may wish to be careful of if you have aquamarine in its quite a raw form like it's not tumbled like this one you probably don't want to touch it too much it can have some toxic elements to it as with some stones you really only want to work with them if you have them in a physical form when they are tumbled it just makes it more safer now if I had one word to describe aqua marine it would be courage it's such a good stone for stepping into that really allowing you to kind of maybe step out of your comfort zone just a little bit or a lot and some of the things that this stone can be beneficial for one being allergies so alleviating some allergies some of those symptoms of allergies communication again because of this throat creativity digestion working with intuition and discerning like what's fear and what's really the intuition can also help with joy and mental clarity as well which we all love we all love a bit of clarity and then also can help with calming the nervous system which many of us do wish there was just the thing called a calm system instead of a nervous system but anyway <laughs> and in ancient um, cultures and then also some more modern cultures and peoples they've often talked about aquamarine is possessing the power to overcome water obstacles so those that traveled the oceans and were quite acquainted with the stone would often um, work with the stone whether they take it with them or they perform other rituals just to ask for some peace and calm um, and clear direction when traveling such voyages as well and another great thing about aquamarine is that it's a stone that tends to work well with quite a lot of other stones. And I'll let you do your research with that. If you've got aquamarine, if you want to work with that stone and you've got some others, then experiment. You can also do your research as well. If you've got any requests of particular stones that you'd like me to cover, you can leave that in the comments section down below. 
and I will see you again soon.